am the Ames Academic Advisor here at Early College Academy. So our staff is made up of District 6 staff and Ames Community College staff. And our Early College model is a little bit unique as we've looked across the country at other Early College models. Because a lot of them, the students are in high schools, taking classes um, off-site. Um, one the school that we visited, the high school was right across the street from the college, so they just walked across the street. So everything happens in-house here at Early College Academy. So I'm here full-time. My primary responsibility is working with juniors and seniors. So working with them when they are essentially, as you'll see, full-time college students, um, working through their post-grad plans. Um, so whether that includes going on to a four-year school, um, a two-year school for some um, career technical training, um, workforce, military, whatever that is, I always tell them, it doesn't matter to me what your plan is, you just have to have a plan. So we gotta work towards that plan. So that is one of my primary responsibilities. Um, so I work very closely with Ms. Kress, who is doing the student support session, if anybody goes to that. She's our District 6 school counselor. So together, um, we make up our counseling department here at ECA. So we're gonna talk about high school graduation requirements, we're gonna talk about college graduation requirements, and how we merge those sets of requirements um, to, in a way that allows students to graduate from Early College Academy with their high school diploma and their um, Session two degree. is now starting. So high school graduation requirements, we have three different components. The first are the credits, the number of credits. These requirements are the same for all of the District 6 comprehensive high schools. So Greeley West, Greeley Central, Northridge, Early College Academy, um, Jefferson, we all have the same graduation requirements. So a single semester is equivalent to half a credit, so 0.5 credit. So a full year would be one credit. So as we look at that language arts, students have to take four years of language arts. Students take, at a minimum, three years, but you'll see that it has, we actually sneak in an extra math class there. Science is three years. Social studies is three credits, or three years. Physical education is a year of PE and a semester of health. Um, and then the balance is electives, so seven and a half credits of electives, which brings students to a total of 22 credits for high school graduation, okay? So we've got the credit piece, courses. The district has some specific courses that students have to complete for high school graduation. They have to have 0.5 credits of U.S. government, so that's a semester of U.S. government. They have to have one full credit of U.S. history, so that's two semesters of U.S. history that they take. A health class, so a single semester of health, and then PE, two semesters of PE. So those are the only very specific courses that students have to take. And then we have some wiggle room in the rest of the courses themselves. So we've got credits, we've got courses, and then the state of Colorado has something called the Demonstration of College and Career Readiness. And so I just share this as more of an information point because one of the ways that students satisfies it, it, satisfy it and demonstrate that in math and English is taking a college class in math and English. And every student at ECA does that. So it is not a challenge for ECA students to meet that requirement. Um, it's more something that I share with them as an information point that this is a requirement and you're done with it already. So um, if students are looking at other high schools, it, there are a variety of ways that students can meet that requirement. Here at ECA, it just happens naturally through the progression of their courses. Any questions about the high school graduation requirements? Okay, so at the same time, we're working on the Associate of Arts Liberal Arts degree. So that is the degree that our students work on and what that essentially gives them is their first two years of general education requirement towards a four-year degree. So all college degrees, the college degrees are made up of general ed credits, they're made up of major specific credits and elective credits. So regardless of where a student goes or what they might be studying, this liberal arts degree is going to give them that general education piece. So when we look at the college side of things, when we talk about credits, it's a little bit different. So a single semester is worth three credits on the college side. So a, a class, a health class, for example, a student is earning 0.5 credits on the high school transcript and then earning three credit hours on the college transcript. So as we look at that, you can see the total is 
60 credits for the associate's degree, six credits of written communication, so that's English composition, one and two. Um, math, the degree requires only one math class. Depending upon where a student starts and what their intended a career or college pathway is, they may take more math than that. And many of our students take more than one college math class. Arts and Humanities, History, Social, and Behavioral Sciences is a total of 15 credits. So five different classes. That's everything from sociology and psychology, um, intro to political science, economics, art appreciation, music appreciation. There's a bunch of different courses that fall in that category. And so some of those students will take um, naturally as part of their ninth and 10th grade sequence. And then some of those are, are more up to the student's choice as we move into junior and senior year. Physical and life sciences is seven credits, so that's two classes, two college science classes. Um, an additional required course, they changed the requirements two years ago and renamed that, what, what is that, additional required course? They give a couple of options, but that's how it's displayed. And then electives, so 26 credits of electives, which is about eight or nine classes, depending upon how many credits the courses are worth. So electives could be additional credits in any of these categories. So if a student took two math classes, one would count in the math category, and then the other one would count in the elective category. Um, so student, every class that a student takes at ECA counts towards the high school graduation requirements or the college graduation requirements. There's nothing that is fluff or that's not counting towards their degree. A couple of important things to know as we think about the college degree. The students have to earn, um, they have to earn all 60 credits, but then they also have to have a 2.0 GPA in their college classes at the end of that degree in order to earn the degree. So it's the credits and the grade point requirement. Um, students have to earn a grade of C minus or better in order for the college credits to transfer. And we'll talk more about the transferability of credits um, later. And we already talked about how much the, um, the credit is worth. So any questions about that? On our website, um, there is an, a counseling department tab and then an advising section. And it lists, I have listed there, all of the courses, the college courses that we offer at ECA, as well as the description. So if anybody is just kind of curious, what, you know, what are the courses? Um, that information is available on our website. And, um, I think it's relatively up to date. Not a lot of changes from year to year. So sequence of courses. So how do we do this? How do we get a high school diploma and an associate of arts degree done in four years? Ninth and 10th grade are very prescribed. Students do not have a lot of choices in terms of the courses that they take. One of the things that's nice about that though is that that means that all of our ninth graders are essentially taking the same classes. So whether students are in class with their good friends or they're not, they're taking the same classes and are able to work together. Um, and it kind of just helps promote that culture um, of, of schoolwork and getting things done. So students will take a math class. They'll come in at whatever is the appropriate math class for them. Typical sequence is Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2. But we have some students that are taking Algebra as eighth graders, so they would come into Geometry. Some students that are already in Algebra 2, um, maybe taking, you know, with, or Geometry and they would start with Algebra 2 or Algebra 2 now in college. So we really look at that on an individual basis and schedule that according to where the student is. Everybody takes English 9, everybody takes Physics. Academic Seminar is our guided and supervised study hall, essentially. So we know, students, how many of you have taken high school classes before? Okay, one person. My son. How many K? How many of you have taken college classes before? Nobody, right? You're learning how to be a high school student and a college student at the same time. And I hear from a lot of students that when they come, the homework is, is a little bit of a different load than what they're used to in some from some middle schools. So we're going to build time into your school day through academic seminar, um, through our advanced academic achievement class, to give you time to do schoolwork during the day to work with tutors, to ask your teachers for help, to really help set you up for success and get that firm foundation in place as a ninth and 10th grader so that when you're a full-time college student in 11th and 12th grade, you've got all of those habits and skills already developed. So academic seminar counts as an elective on the high school transcript. So even though it's that, that guided study hall time, you're still getting credit towards um, the elective credits. 
You'll do a semester of PE, and then music appreciation is a college class. So it's the first single semester college class that you'll take. Um, that counts as an elective on the high school side, and counts in that arts and humanities area on the college side. Advanced Academic Achievement is essentially a college success class. And so it is going to help teach students time management, note taking, organization, goal setting, um, how to access resources through the college library, um, how to write um, at the college level, all of those types of things. And then American Government is a college class as well. Uh, Advanced Academic Achievement and American Government are what we call decelerated courses. So we take a, what a course that would typically be a single semester and we slow it down and spread it out over the entire year. So students get uh, two semesters worth of credit on their high school transcript for American government, two semesters of credit for advanced academic achievement. And that really allows, if anybody went to the English and Social Studies um, session, Professor Howell teaches the American government class. So that really allows him the time to help students learn how to research, how to write at the college level, um, how, you know, how to put papers together, so that we're really, again, building that foundation as a ninth grader to help students as they move into 10th grade, okay? 10th grade, next math class. Everybody's taking math. Um, English 10, biology, academic seminar is still part of that schedule. Uh, students are gonna jump into Spanish, a college Spanish class. So that's also gonna be spread out over the year. Spanish one for our students who are new to the Spanish language or Spanish 2 for our students who are heritage speakers who come in with that background and familiarity in the Spanish language. Students will have that second semester of PE to finish off that PE credit and then a single semester of health and that is the college class so it takes care of that health requirement on the high school side and counts as an elective on the college side. And then U.S. History. U.S. History is a college class that is also decelerated so it's going to give them the two semesters that they need on the high school transcript for high school graduation and also then gives them the college credit that they need because um, students have to take one history course um, for that associate's degree. So very much everybody's taken the same thing. It's very prescriptive. Um, when students get into junior and senior year, you can see, if you, if you can see it, the bolding there, we flip junior and senior year. Most of the classes are college classes. Our students are essentially full-time college students. So they're taking um, either finishing the high school sequence in math as 11th graders in Algebra 2 or jumping into their first college math class, depending upon, again, where they were at. Most of our students will be in English Composition 1 and 2, which is that college writing sequence. Um, we do have right now one section of a high school English 11 class for our students who are not quite ready um, because English Comp 1, students have to earn a C in order to move on to English Comp 2. That's an AIMS requirement. So we want to make sure students are set up for success there. Social studies electives. Students have to have two more social studies classes to satisfy that high school graduation requirement. So this is one of those where students are going to have kind of a menu of choices to choose from. And depending upon what they're interested in and what their future college or career pathway might be, we're going to help guide them in certain directions. So if a student says to me, you know, I'm thinking about studying business, then I'm going to say, let's, let's do economics, macro and microeconomics. Azure social studies courses because those are required courses of every business major out there. So sometimes students will have that idea in mind and we can find those courses that best fit them. Chemistry is um, the college science class that students take junior year and then electives. So students will take typically between 12 and 15 credit hours of college classes each semester. So that's four or five classes. Um, which means that they have two or three classes in their schedule, periods in the day, where they're not scheduled in classes, where students, the most successful students, use that time to do their schoolwork, to do their school. Because it's a little bit different here because you're in your classes every single day, whereas on a traditional college campus, you maybe have class two days a week, right? Or maybe a Monday, Wednesday, Friday class. So students are in class five days a week. So again, there's that time built in the day where if students use it, they have plenty of time um, to get going on that work. Senior year is all high school class, or excuse me, all college classes. We're really pushing for another math class, senior year. So even if a student is done with our requirements, we want to have that rigorous um, academic curriculum. A senior sequence of English, which is typically literature and world mythology, environmental science, and then electives. 
So again, depending upon what it is that the students are interested in. The chemistry and environmental science classes. Um, the bulk of the classes take place here. The students once a month do go over to Ames and use lab space over at Ames um, to do that. So that's kind of a neat experience for them to get into um, a college um, laboratory. Um, and it's nice space that they set aside for us over there. So this shows you the credit progression, kind of how we get to the minimum 22 credits for high school graduation. On the college side, our students typically will graduate with more than this, the minimum 60 credits that are required. Um, about 85% of our students graduate with their associate's degree, which is phenomenal when you compare that to two-year degree attainment rates on community college campuses. That 15% that graduate without their associate's degree are graduating with 50, 45, 50, 55 college credits. So they are still graduating with a pretty significant amount of credit and then they have Mrs. Marshall harassing them to get over to Ames and finish that degree um, even if they're planning on going on to a four year so that they have that credential. Um, so this can be a great opportunity for students who want to be here, right? Who students want to be here and they want to work hard because it's hard work. I mean, you're taking, college is not easy. Um, so students are taking that, but they can be a great way then for when students who want to go on to a four-year school in particular, um, then go to that school with essentially junior standing because they've got session those 60 Session two credits. is now ending. Oh Please gosh, travel to session three. I talked so much. So two other quick things. <laughs> two, uh, I'm going to block the door. This is really important. I just want you to know academic standards. Y'all would be Ames Community College students, which means you have to uh, follow the Ames academic standards. So you have to maintain a 2.0 GPA. If your GPA drops below 2.0, which is a C average in your college classes, you go on to what's called academic probation and then could potentially go on to what's called academic suspension. And at academic suspension, the colleges say, well, we want you to take a time out because you're kind of digging yourself a hole, right? You're not doing well in your courses. We want you to take a time out and you can't take college classes for a semester. And that gets really tricky for us because particularly if a student is, in, is a 10th grader, we've got high school classes and college classes, but they gotta have a full schedule. So if we, don't, if we can't do that full schedule, then we have to potentially look at other options. So when students go into academic probation, I work with them to develop a recovery plan, what we call it, um, and students then most often move off of academic probation. It's not a um, you know, death sentence or a, like, oh, you're in trouble, but um, it's just something that we look at closely. Transferring college credits. Can your college try a credits transfer? Yes, absolutely. General rule of thumb is that as long as you earn a grade of C or better, the college that you earn them at is accredited, which Ames Community College is accredited, and the college that you're transferring to offers a similar course, those credits will transfer. Okay, so our students are taking gen ed coursework. It is nothing crazy um, that UNC, CSU, Harvard, whatever, um, is, is not going to offer. So when students get there, again, they have essentially those first two years already done of that degree requirement. Most of our courses, about 95% of them, are part of the Colorado Guaranteed Transfer Program, which says that if students um, earn a C or better, and go to one of the Colorado public colleges and universities, the courses are guaranteed to transfer. So it really does give our students that benefit, that kind of head start when they get to, um, when they get to the four-year schools. Our ultimate goal is graduation. This is our class of 2022. Our students have two graduations that they get to participate in. Um, they have their early college academy graduation, and then they do get to participate in the Ames Community College graduation because they are graduating from college. Um, so that's a, that is a big deal around here. Um, so that was a lot of information. I started early and I still ended up going late. Um, a lot of information is on our website. Um, I will also be around at the end of the evening out in the lobby. So if you have any other, if you have questions, feel free to grab me, okay? Thank you.